Welcome to the fourth webinar in the IT for Dental Professionals series. My name is Derek Watson. I'm a dentist with a keen interest in information technology, um, which I hope will rub off on a few of you. This webinar is being recorded and uh, will be available online afterwards, so if anything is unclear, you can watch again and forward the link to anyone else you think may benefit. In the first webinar, we covered word processing and email. In the second, we covered scanning and file formats. And in the third, I covered spreadsheets and accounting programs. So if you missed any of them, they're all available online, and I will send a link in the post-webinar email. Let's have a look at what we're going to cover in the fourth webinar in the series. As soon as you start to use a computer, you're creating information, whether it's your name and password, some family photos, or your patient database. To a certain extent, this represents an investment of your time. If your computer was to be stolen or damaged by water, for example, then you would have to do all that work again, and this would have a cost implication. The worst case scenario is that you might lose some information that's irreplaceable, such as your wedding photographs. There's no way to describe that sinking feeling you get when you realize that you've lost some data. I mean, really, really lost it, as in you'll never get it back, because there is nowhere else you can look. No other copies of it exist. Everybody who has worked with computers for any length of time will have lost some data and it hurts so bad and is so simple to prevent that it usually never happens twice. So what can you do about it? Don't worry if this sounds like a technical subject, I'm going to keep this all very simple. Here's a screenshot of Microsoft Word. I blanked out the list of files to show you one of the simplest ways you can avoid losing your work and that is the save or save as options. Almost as soon as you start typing a document, you should save it, and continue to save it every five minutes or so, or as often as you make any significant change. The first rule of data safety is that data is better on your hard disk than it is in the computer's memory, where it could be lost much more easily by a power cut or a wrong key press. The shortcut in most programs to save data is Control S. That's hold down the Control button, press and release S, and then release the Control button. Because that's such a good idea, there's an option in Word to save your work automatically on a regular basis. In effect, Word presses Control-S for you every five minutes. It might only be five minutes' work, but you might never get that document worded in exactly the same brilliant way if you have to do it again. So it's worth taking a quick look at these options, which you can access by clicking on File, then Options, and then Save, and checking that they're set up how you want them. If your computer crashes while you're in the middle of working, Word will attempt to recover these auto-saved versions of your work, and while it's not 100% perfect, it is better than losing all of your work. And this feature was introduced on the back of the experiences of users like me who, without these fantastic features, lost plenty of work in the 1980s. Inside your computer is a hard drive. It will usually be called the C drive, and you can see it by right-clicking on the Start icon in Windows 7 and selecting Open Windows Explorer and I've outlined it here. Your C drive contains your data which your computer tries to organize for you. It doesn't always work, but at least it tries. Problems start to arise because you only have one copy of your data on your C drive. Computers nowadays are very reliable and it's likely that you will have bought a new computer and moved your data onto a new C drive before your old C drive packs up. But the life of a hard disk is not infinite and nobody knows when a hard drive is about to fail. The chances of it failing on any day are a statistical probability. You can say that it's not likely to fail when it's new and more likely to fail after a few years. But those of you who play the lottery know that even a 1 in 14 million chance comes up almost every week. Having a hard drive fail is like winning the lottery in reverse. You turn on your computer as normal, but nothing happens. It might report finding a problem, finding the hard drive. You will turn it off and on again. It still won't work. Gradually, you realize that your hard drive is now useful only as a paperweight, and you might also realize that you've lost all of your data. You've gone back overnight to the days before you had a computer, and you'd better get up in the loft and dust off that shoebox of old Polaroids, because that's all you've got left of the family archive. So you need to have more than one copy of your data. You can do this by using Windows' built-in backup function. You can get to this by typing backup in the search box just above the start button, but to be honest, backing up your computer is a chore. 
If it's all that you've got, then you must do it because a year old backup is better than no data at all. But the best way to secure your data is simply not to hold it on your computer. I'm going to illustrate this using this rather cheesy but free artwork. Everyone is used to connecting their computer to a modem or a router that connects to the web. All you do is plug in some network attached storage and tell your computer to store the data on this rather than on your local computer. If we go back quickly to our previous slide, you can see the network attached storage here listed as drive H. Your computer doesn't care whether it's in a different room. It just treats it as a local drive and sends all the data off to the same place. This has many advantages. First, if your computer blows up, you don't care. You just buy a new one, plug it in, tell it about the network attached storage and all your data is right where you left it. Secondly, if you get a virus and need to reformat and reinstall your operating system, or you want to put your computer back to its new state to speed it up or remove unwanted software or you plan to sell it, you can do it without worrying too much about whether your data has been corrupted or might be lost in the reformat. Viruses are most unlikely to jump to a storage drive and when you have reformatted your computer, your data is where you left it. Lastly, network attached storage can keep your data much safer than your computer can and here is why. You can put more than one hard drive in your network attached storage. Not only does this give you fantastic storage capacity, it means the data can be duplicated on more than one drive, so that if any one drive fails, then the data is still safe. Let me illustrate that quickly, and this is about as complicated as it gets, so don't worry, you don't need to understand what I'm saying, as long as I've convinced you that it's a good idea. Here is a network attached storage with four drives. The data is split into three parts, A, B and C, and stored with parts A and B on drive 1, parts A and C on drive 2, and parts B and C on drive 3. Drive 4 is a spare, a bit like a spare tyre on a car. It's only brought into use if it's needed. It would be needed if drives 1, 2 or 3 failed, in which case their data is automatically copied onto drive 4 and the storage sends you an email to tell you that you need to buy a new drive. But what if, while you are out buying that drive, another drive failed? Well, you can see that your data is still safe on any two drives, so still nothing is lost. If you had three drives fail before you got a chance to replace even one of them, and I don't know of anyone who has had this happen, then it's probably God telling you that you shouldn't have all those photos in the first place. This does cost some money to set up because you have to buy the hard disk drives as well as the storage device. But if you work out what your data is worth and divide the cost between the number of computers that can use it and factor in the convenience of never having to move your data again, plus the peace of mind that it's all safe, I think it's the best system. You don't have to buy a storage device with four drives. You can buy one very cheaply with two and that might be all that you need as long as it's got more than one. Just remember to get one that plugs into your router or modem with an Ethernet cable and not one that plugs into your computer via USB, which will be much slower and less versatile. And check whether the disks are included. It's better to buy one that includes the disks because they do work better with a slightly different type of disk that is less fault tolerant than the single disk that you find in most PCs. The magic word you're looking for is RAID, which stands for Redundant Array of independent or inexpensive disks. It's no use buying a box that holds two hard drives if they don't have RAID capacity. All of us need help at one point or another and if you are going to invent a machine that could give you help then a computer is what you'd come up with. When people get frustrated with their computers they start bashing the buttons and in Western cultures they usually start at the top left and work down. The first key you will see on any keyboard is the escape key and this was deliberately put on the top left because it usually stops the computer doing something that you don't want it to be doing. Once you have bashed the escape key and stopped your computer then you need to know what went wrong and what you can do about it. So the next key along is F1 or the universal help key. Bashing F1 usually gets you some help with what you're doing. For example pressing F1 in Word will give you their help window. 
Pressing F1 in Google's Chrome web browser gives you the help screen. So the first rule of getting help is to press F1. There are so many things that can go wrong that I can't possibly list the solution to everything here. But one of the best ways to find a solution is to use a search engine like Google. This assumes that you are connected to the web. About the only thing that Google can't help you with is setting up your web connection. But once you're connected, the sky's the limit as far as research is concerned. The technology exists now to allow others to take control of your computer, diagnose and fix problems in real time. This is one bit of software that I use a lot to help people. It's called LogMeIn. It's free and once you have installed it on your computer then all you have to do is ring your computer techie friend and he or she can get into your computer and solve most problems including installing software and finding things that you've lost. You retain control over your computer and it's not possible for someone to use it to log into your computer unless you give them your username and password. But if you're worried then you can change your password or even install and uninstall the software on each occasion but that's a bit inconvenient and it's better just to find someone you can trust. I'm going to cover remote access in a later tutorial because you can also use this software to work from home. And don't forget manufacturers websites which contain lots of information if you've lost the installation disks or you've lost the manual for a printer. For example, if you go to the printer manufacturer's website, you'll find links to download drivers and manuals and various other bits of software, that'll, diagnostic software that will help you. So, to summarize, we looked at data backup and how to reduce the chances of data loss and then how to get help. Other training you might be interested in are the Financial Friday series. The next speaker will be Sarah Smith from Money for Dentists, who will be talking about how gender affects financial planning. That's on Friday the 14th of December at 1.10pm, conveniently designed to fit into your lunch hour. Free CPD for all webinars is available for DFO and DPA members. That about wraps it up, so thanks for your time and attention.